Hello Targar friends, hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it is time for another Orc Mode workout and today is Dynamic Effort Squat and Deadlift Day. This is going to be a super long video so let's uh, get into this quickly. The intro, please click like down below, help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. We did not do that in yesterday's vlog so if you guys could go click like on that one also in addition to this one it would be greatly appreciated. Um, I'm going to address one of the things someone said yesterday because I wrote them a long response and they didn't reply. They're like, Jason, I thought you said people aren't special snowflakes. They don't need to find what works for them. What do you mean doing the speed work that works for you? Yeah, I'm doing the common speed work. I'm not doing the ultra advanced elite lifter version. Okay, so what works for me is what works for most people. And that's what I'm going back to. And it's not the issue that one day the more advanced ways won't work. It's that... I am not an elite enough lifter to make the most out of them yet. Okay, it's not something special about me. It's that I'm not special. Does that make sense? I'm not special enough yet to get away with them. Maybe my deadlift is. Okay, but as an overall lifter, uh, running those ultra advanced aggressive waves are not working. So I'm taking it back one notch to the next notch down which means we run stuff like 50, 55, 60 percent plus 25 percent band or chain and then rotate bands or chains every wave or change bars every wave. Okay, standard format. This is, this is the normal widely accepted speed work. And then we adjust training volume based upon the type of accommodation we do and what percentage we're at. Okay, it's, it's not changing that. Um, speed work was good today though. The squats were good. Uh, Again, I'd like them to be a hair faster, but they're not bad. They're not bad. And I think they got faster as I went. Um, and again, I felt like I was getting more control as I went. The first couple sets were, you know, a little sloppy. A little sloppy, but that's normal. And I felt like as I got better into it by about the third set, and I think this is set four out of nine, because I did nine doubles with this percentage, this one got better. Okay. Now, for some people who are like, should it be even faster? Not at the top against those chains. It's pretty fast. Considering the, the chain weight, though, um, I'm running around 140 pounds of chains. Little bits on the ground. So, uh, we're talking about uh, bar weight is 302. So, I'm running 55% of my max. My, my max box squat is 552 right now. So, I'm running 302 uh, at the bottom with about 140 pounds of chain. So as we're hitting that lockout, we're getting well up past 400. And so again, exploding against it isn't always going to look as fast as we would like. If it's straight weight, it should really pop. But I feel good about keeping that upper back tight. And for me, that's the main thing. And I felt a lot of fatigue in my hips. Um, and I've said already, what are, what are my two weak links on the, the squat? I feel like right now it's upper back and hips. Now, it's not to say that I don't want more quad and hamstring and glute and all that. I want all those things and we train all those things. But realistically, hips. And because I got my upper back really tight and I kept that chest up and I kept that chin up and I drove up every time I drove into it while keeping it up and keeping it tight. Elbows down, chest up, and that's what we want. Okay, And anyone who's telling you, oh, that's not the right way to squat, Mm, I want to ask you how much do they squat? How many elite lifters are they coaching? Okay, and that's what you guys got to remember with that, that head position thing. You don't see many people who coach really elite lifters who don't teach you to keep your chin and your chest up. And you get all that tight and you push up into the bar. Right? You want your shoulders and chest to push up into that bar. And so as I'm getting to the top, especially against those chains, I want to keep that. See the way that locks out? got the everything pulled up keeping it upright and driving up into it in a curve almost okay and that's what I need to do and that's the the reason again I would manage to get even with that other bar the other day I still hit a, a pretty good lift this week uh, because I'm getting better at keeping that upper back up and driving against it because that bar actually kind of tests some of that to some extent because it pulls you uh, the other direction back and you end up leaning forward all the good mornings have helped. And I feel like the good mornings are helping here and all the upper back work is helping. Like upper back is an ultra high priority for me. Right? It's, it's mainly been hamstrings, upper back, triceps. 
again, keeping in mind, we're working other stuff. Just that we know those are weak links, so I've been putting a lot of emphasis on them. But I noticed because I got all of that tight, right, everything felt good up there. So then what happens? Then my next weak link, I start to really, really feel it. My hips, and again, keeping in mind, I do a really wide stance squat. So hips can be the weak link. If I was doing an ultra narrow stance, we could talk about quads and all that more. And I, I am actually going to do some quad work today. And I do quad work. People have to remember, I drag the sled at least twice a week. But I feel like, uh, particularly with weather and everything, me adding in some extra quad work will let me get away with only twice a week. I don't have to ensure I do it three. Because it, it can be difficult to, to get out and do that during rainy seasons and stuff uh, as much as I would like. But the hips, the hips were lit up. Like I felt them tremendously. My hips to, are just completely finished today. Because this is, a, again, a very, very long workout. So same thing. We did the exact same thing with the deadlifts. Now, I'm calculating my max off my last deficit PR, which was better than my last conventional PR. So I'm using that for my percentages. Okay. My deadlift is probably higher than 625. My deficit 625. But that's what we're, we're going to calculate off. Because I haven't hit a bigger true deadlift yet. So 55% and then... Again, with the chains, trying to run right around 25%. And again, it can be hard to get the, the chains fine-tuned. So at the moment, I've got 160 pounds of chains on there. Right? Right at about 160. Might be a hair more. But again, there's almost no chains still on the ground. Notice some of the chains come completely off the ground, so we can we can safely call that a true 160. And notice I'm getting those lockouts better. I'm getting locked back really good against that. Um, and this is a good test of grip. You know, this made me feel good because I did a lot of grip training today, and grip actually held quite good. Uh, but, I mean, you feel the grip when you do accommodating resistance on speed work like this. But again, we have almost no chain on the ground. There's just enough to prevent it from swinging. So happy with these. Uh, so again, nine nine singles. So notice that our volume is equal on speed days. Some people will point that out. They're like, oh, you do triples on bench, doubles on squat, and singles on deadlift. Yeah, but I do squat and deadlift those sessions. It ends up being the same volume at the same percentages of my maxes with the same percentage of chain weight of max or band weight. Volume is equal. And notice we cut a set each time we increase. So it was nine triples for speed bench, nine doubles for speed squat, nine singles for speed deadlift. So technically, three by nine today, just like yesterday. Because again, it's mostly lower body. So the volume is equal. I and mean, then you could multiply it out and figure out my average tonnage moved. So, again, I'm not doing anything special. I'm staying pretty much within the standard template for West Side speed work. And I could always be faster. But I'm working on it. I'm doing all this, this serious speed work. We'll get faster and faster. We'll get faster. Especially since I'm doing more plyometrics and, and building everything. But, you know, happy with these today. They felt good. They felt good. And I felt good about getting them locked back, except for maybe one or two reps didn't lock as pretty as I'd like. But again, I need that extra upper back. I need better just posture. A lot of my, my rehab work I'm doing for all of my shoulders and stuff is, should help with that. It's just going to take time. And then my last one, I tried to really drive through hard and make it really good. So again, I got a nice lock back. Uh, but happy with it. And those of you who are commenting lately, you're like, you're looking more jacked. Yeah, hope so. I mean, I'm losing weight slowly. Slow loss of body fat and slow drop in scale weight while gaining small amounts of muscle probably will. It'll, it'll make you look more jacked. Keeping in mind, guys, I mean, my fat-free mass index is, is pretty high. My lean mass is, is pretty dang high. Um, then for the good mornings, I want to do at least one set on speed day. It's so hard for me to do good mornings after all the speed work with the sort of weights I use on good mornings. So I'm like, I always want to get at least one really good quality set in, and I do most of the volume on max day on these. But I want to get something in to make sure I stimulate that movement pattern. 
And I'm like, I want to keep that other bar in the rotation because I really like the way it, it works. So today I decided to change it up, right? To avoid overuse, I switched to a different bar, different bar. And this is more weight. I couldn't do 20 straight. Like I had to actually rest pause the last five reps to get to 20. So this was challenging. This was a hard set. And considering the total volume of the workout, um, it's, it's fine that I only did one set of these. Mainly is I want to make sure this, this groove and movement pattern gets trained. And so it's just a different lift today because I use the chain. It's 290 at the lockout, by the way. For those curious, again, that's a heavier bar, 52-pound bar. So 232 on the bar and then the rest of it in chain weight. Right? About 60 pounds of chains. But I had to rest pause those last few. But I managed to squeeze out that 20. But my hips were just destroyed. So then what did we do? Um, not that I necessarily need the extra quad work. Let's be honest. My quads are probably big enough to reach my strength goals. But I want to make sure. And what else do I need? I need the hip. I know my hips need the work. Well, what's going to work the hips? Anything that puts me into that deep squat position like that, right? So I'm having to step up from a below parallel position. This is a high barbell step up. And I did three sets of 15. Actually, I ended up doing an extra rep on the last set. And yeah, I know it's only a 65 pound barbell. Keeping in mind, I weigh 219 and I'm, I'm past 220 by the time I've eaten food and drink breakfast. My 219 is my morning weigh in, first thing in the morning. I gain weight through the day. I usually gain 9 to 10 pounds through the day, and then I lose that again by the time I wake up in the morning. That's normal. So if I weigh myself in the, in the afternoon, I'm usually at my heaviest, and then the scale starts drifting down. If I were to weigh myself throughout the day, that's the, the trend I've noticed. Um, so my, my weight is already past 220 again by the time I'm training, because I've eaten breakfast, and I mean, I've had 3 or 4 pounds of food and liquid. So... These are realistically, I'm stepping up with 285 plus, maybe 290 even. No, well, my, my, my calves weigh something. They're pretty big. I have 18 inch calves. Um, you know, so at least 280 on each leg. It adds up. It's cumulative. I didn't take these really to failure, but I wanted to get a good burn. And the other thing is that my hips were so fatigued, I wanted to really get in there and work those hip flexors, especially on speed day, because this is my highest volume day. I have the weekend to only have to deal with, you know, minor stuff. A lot of restoration, do sled drags. I wanted to make sure I'm stimulating all that. I need those hips to grow. And, you know, this will build glutes. It'll build quads. It'll definitely build quads. Quads blow up every time I start doing these. So I'll take the extra lower quad development. It might help with the squat. I don't feel it's a weak link on my squat. It won't hurt to have a little more though. But the hips, I need to make sure my hip flexors are coming on. It's another reason I'm adding more and more hanging leg raises in uh, off camera for my extra work on my ab work. Hanging leg raises, doing these. I feel like the, the glute ham raise though really hits my hips super hard. But I've got to build my hips up. And I need to hit them everything from a couple different angles. Again, people say stuff like, what's the best exercise? There's no best exercise. You need to hit everything from more than one angle. If you're really trying to truly maximize development and strengthen a muscle, and they go hand in hand, by the way, you're not going to separate those two. You need more than one angle. And in this case, if I know my hips need the work, this does it. This high step up works the hips really hard. In addition to quads, glutes. Okay, and it's again very specific to squatting. This carries over to a deep squat. The upside, minimal axle load, loading. I only have 65 pounds up on my shoulders. That's nothing. Okay, that's nothing for me. So again, because I get so much axial loading from all the other stuff throughout the week and the max work and then, you know, again, the squats, deadlifts, and good mornings. I need everything else to be easy on that because because it gets destroyed. It's the only reason I want like oh, no axial loading on my, my upper body days right now. Why we don't do barbell rows. So I don't even do standing presses anymore. 
I mean the upright rows, but they're lightweight. So the, the point here is that I need to build these muscles, but in a way that's easy on my recovery. Okay, this is easier on the recovery. And again, people talking about, well, the movement pattern of squatting. is so it doesn't matter. I'm already do speed squats and then I max squat every now and then. That is our movement pattern. This just builds strength in the direct muscle involvement that I need in the lower body. It has specificity of training with joint angles. So again, the quad will get a little more efficient out of the bottom. Getting that pop. Building the hips because the hips, I feel like, based upon what I can see and feel, my hips are a weak link in my squat. Upper back is a weak link. Hips are a weak link. I need those hips to grow. But, again, we'll welcome any growth. So, I mean, if the quads grow a little bit and it helps, then by all means. Um, but, and like I said, it's not going to hurt me to ever have bigger quads even when they're not a weak link on my squat. Right? It still might equal more, more push out of the bottom. Possibly even push out of the bottom of my deadlift. And we got a max deadlift coming up. So we'll talk about grip training a little bit in a minute. But, yeah, three sets of 15 on these. Um, and again, at my body weight with this bar, it's relatively taxing, especially with this deep into the workout, keeping in mind all the other stuff we just did. Now, speed work's a lot of, lot of work. It's a lot of volume uh, in those good mornings. But again, I'll probably try to do more of these on, on my Fridays, on my dynamic days. And I'll get better and better at them. I'll push a little bit of progression on it. We'll try to get better. Build my hips. You know, build a little more lower quad. We'll get that 600 squat. We'll get that 600 squat. And, you know, I'll keep working my body weight down. All right? I mean, realistically, we know I probably need to be 210 or less. I'm at 219 now. What happens if I lose another 9 or 10 pounds of body fat? Then I'm 210. I could easily water cut to 198. You guys have seen me do 18 pound water cuts before. Right? 12, not a big deal. Especially if I get under 210. Might be worth doing. And push that squat up to 600. Try to get a, a triple body weight squat. I don't think anybody can hate on that. With no wraps. Like raw, raw. Yep. So we do whatever we have to do, but I've got to work all these weak links, and we have to get jacked. Body composition is the name of the game right now. Everything outside of my max work and my speed work is going to be about body composition and weak links. Uh, inverted rows. These went really good today, and I'm, I'm trying to extend all the way at the bottom so that my, my scapula spread apart now, which tests the grip a little more, but surprisingly, my first few sets of these, I held on for all 15 reps. All 15 reps in one set while getting scapular protraction at the bottom. Uh, and that's after doing the speed pulls. And keeping in mind, I'm locking over 500 pounds on those speed pulls. So I'm holding over 500 at the lockout. And then this went pretty good. And again, I'm going to need my grip to take a little bit of a break this weekend. Because I've got a max pull on Tuesday. I'm going to need to do a max deadlift of some type. So come Monday, I'm not going to be doing all this axle bar work. So I need to get the grip training in now so that I can adapt and my grip will be good and strong by the time we pull. And obviously I'm doing this every week now. I'm doing all the grip work. But I just want to make sure on Friday it's going to dig in good so you guys will see what I do with the upright rows. And again, we're trying to avoid overuse. So we've got to change some stuff up. Um, and even these, I'm going to end up having to put my feet up at an angle just to get a different angle so we avoid acclimating. But again, phenomenal grip work. And these I'm doing now, I've been changing grips around now. I'm just directly at shoulder width because I feel like this is a really strong position for me. And because if it's a strong position for my overall back, it means my grip is going to get worked harder. Okay, that's a big deal. And so these, I mean, the first four sets, I banged through on the grip, even with the, the holds and some of them pausing right at the bottom before it hit the end, just to make sure the grip is good. And then the last set, I think I got to about 11, and then I had to had to re-grip for three and then three. So it should have been, I don't know, I think I got 16 or 17 on the last one. 
Um, but again, this is where the grip is starting to finally give out. Grip is finally starting to give out here. It's getting fatigued. My forearms get a pump on these. So if people are curious gripping this axle bar, they're like, what do you mean your, your grip? I'm, I mean, meaning my forearms have a massive pump at the end of each set. And when you start feeling that pump in the middle of the set like that, it's hard to hold onto the bar. Then we did three sets of 20 on the glute ham raises again at the one of the again one of the hardest settings. And what I mean the hardest, notice that my knees are above the plate at the bottom of those pads. The pads on this one are not totally round, they're they're half circles and they sit on plates. Okay, there's a hard bottom. So in, in this case, my knees are above the plates. So that when I come up to the top, they press down into the into it. So they're not pushing against the, the side of the plate. They're above the plate down on it. So this is a harder setting. And I can barely squeeze my ankle and calf in between the rollers and the, and the thing at this point. So hard setting. But I got my 3 by 20 And they were, they were hard today. They were challenging. Like these were tough. And as you guys can see on the final reps, I'm having to use a little bit different technique. Having to... to almost cheated up a bit because I'm just getting fatigued to keep those hamstrings working um, and after doing the other work today because again this is a little more work than I usually do getting all three by 20 was hard I managed it I managed it but it was not easy and notice how how far we are in the workout that's the thing I'm like 21 minutes deep into this this video I'm still going so someone curious um, I finished this workout a long time ago this probably won't be up for a little bit obviously because this has got to render I'm having to voice over for a half hour and then I've got to render this and upload it and everything so I obviously finished this in the morning right this workout today start to finish it I do need some breaks in between some of the work and then I've got to set up a lot of stuff I would say it probably took me three hours to finish I didn't go run errands or do any client skypes or anything like that in between so this one, um, approximately from the time I started loading up the rack and warming up for the squats till I did the last set of reverse hypers was probably three hours. So my breaks in between equal, you know, probably five times the footage. Yep, sounds about right. Because about 30 minutes of footage over three hours. So, you know, again, um, a sixth of this time was spent resting or setting up. I mean, there was a lot of setup involved. So, yep. So, those curious, that's what it takes for this to, to do this long of a workout. Yeah, it's a lot of volume, but my carbs are really high. And that's something else I'll, I need to discuss more with the diet. The training volumes I'm doing, I'm having to do high carb. Like carbs are my dominant uh, micronutrient or macronutrient right now. And I actually have people like when I say that, oh, you're not eating class. Like, guys, I want you guys to think about that logically for a moment. I'm not eating clean food that I must be eating junk food. I'm losing weight and body fat while training like this. Do you, do you think you can do that on a junk food diet? I, I want you to really think that through logically. Do you really think someone who eats pizza and ice cream all day can lose 11 pounds of, of body fat while hitting PRs and training with the workloads that I train with? You'd need a lot of drugs to pull that off. Okay. Now I'm eating very, very clean. So when people ask me, oh, you do a day of eating, it would be boring. Not only do I not want to do it because it's a weird fetish thing, it's really weird. And guys jerk off to that stuff. So no, I, I would really rather not. Um, and yeah, my food would be boring and bland to you. Like today, I've eaten oats. When I say oats, I don't mean there was sugar or cinnamon. I mean I ate oats with hot water in them. And then some milled flaxseed dumped in. I've had chicken breast. About to eat, after this, some beans, brown rice, and broccoli all done in my Instapot. And then skim milk, so that I get enough calcium and other stuff. Okay, that, That's what I'm going to eat today. And when I say that, that's all the ingredients. That doesn't mean I'm adding seasoning I, I it's very very plain I, my food is boring and i like it though i'm fine with it it's easy for me to control my intake and my appetite so that's that's what i'm eating today some days i have a lot of fruit 
not today. Um, then I did the upright rows, wide group upright rows. I used the axle bar today because I wanted just to change it up. I'm like, I want the extra grip work and I want to, again, be careful of overuse because I'm doing these four days a week, all four of my workouts. I couldn't get all five sets today. I got to three sets and my forearms using this because I've done all that other grip work, they were just lit. My forearms were like, we're done. That's all, that's all we can take. And you know what? This is 18 grips, 18 sets of these this week. So what? I didn't do 20. I'm not that worried. That's plenty of volume for my upper back and my shoulder girdle and everything else. But again, it was good grip work today to just finish the week off with. That extra grip work when I know I'm on a deadlift in three days. All right. Well, it might technically be four. It's technically four days. So in four days, I'm going to pull a max deadlift. A little bit of extra grip work when I know my grip has been my weak link in pulling wouldn't be a bad idea. So that's what we did. And again, felt like it was a lot of grip work today. And then this, the same token, this is still a lot of shoulder and upper back work. Considering the five sets of 15 on the inverted rows, um, three sets of 15 with the upright rows. And considering I did five of each in three different workouts this week, that's a lot of volume. So I'm fine with it. My forearms were just shot. They were giving out. And then these, man, who having to do these after all that other hamstring work and, and hip work today was tough. Felt a lot of low back on these today. I mean, it wasn't like painful, but it was, you know, the burn. Um, so, yeah, and I'm doing my normal weight. I don't know that I'm going to be able to increase real soon on these. Just because I'm trying to do them super strict and control the eccentric at the bottom, I'm not letting it swing forward. Um, 315 has been really tough to get all my 5 by 10 on. I mean, it felt better. Today I got 12 on the final set. I wanted to see if I could just squeeze out a couple more reps, and I did. So I'm happy with that. That means we might be close to increasing on this. Because again, on a, on a high volume day like this, uh, especially with, with, again, the rest pausing the good mornings, all the other work, um, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. But I'm not overly worried about having to push the weight up on these at a, at a particularly high rate from here because I get such a deep workout doing them with this. And because I do a lot of work density, and I've been working on work density on uh, my restoration days with it, trying to get up to sets of 50 with the weight I had been doing five sets of 30 on. And I can't get more than one set of 50. Like it starts stalling out and my back cramps a little bit and it just it runs out of steam before 50 after the first set so i get like 50 then 45 but i've got them down to four sets or, or like basically up to three and a half sets now so i'm not having to do five sets to get those reps anymore so a lot of work density there so i'm still chasing a performance component on the restoration days uh, so again not really a big deal uh, but again I'm pushing these pretty hard and I'm, I'm so deep into a workout by the time I get to them. And because they get worked five days a week between the two different uh, weights and, and rep ranges I use, fine with it. But we ended up getting 12 on the final set. And again, it's pretty serious workout. I actually feel really good in spite of it. I don't feel beat up. So that's a good thing. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.